truly delighted to have her here with us today. She's co-founder and president of Eventbrite, the event platform that has raised a total of 200 million in funding, with um, the most recent funding round valuation of the company at uh, 1 billion. So without further ado, because I better kick this off, Julia, please. Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me. I can say that I'm truly overwhelmed by the room and the, and the spirit of, uh, of the group today. And I wanted to tell you today a little bit about Eventbrite, but more about my journey. And I hope that um, my journey thus far will inspire you, inform you, make you not want to be an entrepreneur. I, I hope not, but uh, <laughs> will inspire you to go down your own path um, because I'm standing here today eight and a half years after creating Eventbrite with my co-founder and husband Kevin Hartz and Mike Boy. He's very talented at helping me get mics on. Uh, because I, I took a chance and I took a leap and I didn't ever expect myself to be here um, as a founder of a company. So without further ado, today I, I've been thinking a lot about hindsight and about how hindsight is always or always seems to be 2020, meaning it's much clearer uh, when you look back than when you're in the moment or when you look forward. And to bring some context into how hindsight plays a part for us as founders of Eventbrite, initially when we decided to uh, launch in Ireland because our users, frankly, brought us here. Uh, there was enough traffic in Ireland organically that we knew we wanted to be here, and specifically to be focusing on Dublin. We thought we could do that from the UK. And we thought that our office in London, which we started two and a half years ago and is now 30 people, would suffice for us to be able to expand into Dublin. I say this cringing now that obviously uh, I know the the real truth, which is that in order to establish roots and to grow a, co a company that truly understands the local culture, you have to be in market. And we've actually used this hindsight to learn and to grow in other markets around the world, like Melbourne and Australia, Mendoza and Argentina. Um, and we'll, we'll use this tactic moving forward. But for us, it's about connecting with people because our mission is really to bring the world together through live experiences, and we have to talk to people about who we are and what drives us in order to gain that traction and to gain that trust, to be honest. Um, I'm happy to report that our efforts in Dublin in the last six months since we've uh, hired two local people and are now uh, welcoming our third next week, our results have been tremendous. We've actually seen growth in gross ticket sales, so our volume metric. We've seen higher growth in the last just six months of this year than we had from 2011 to 2013 combined. So really being local, having a global business is, is one thing. We're global in demand, but being local is something that we've learned uh, quite quickly in hindsight. So I like to think of hindsight as not just uh, one metric, but a combination of three. The data, so what you learn and what you observe by being keenly observational along the way. The wisdom to know what you would and wouldn't do next time. And the perspective to really keep your eyes trained on the horizon and to hear and, and really understand from others uh, the ways in which others have failed and succeeded um, and understanding that perspective of the entire situation. So I wanted to, uh, I'm giving away the, the punchline here, but I wanted to talk about some things that I've learned in hindsight that I think are really important as an entrepreneur. So the first is to find at least one partner, um, and that's not just a life partner, although this is like a very sweet uh, picture of, of us as, as life partners, but um, to find a co-founder, if not more than one. And the reason why this is really important is it's extremely hard to go out there and create a company. It's almost impossibly hard to create that company on your own. You need somebody who has complementary skills that can share in both the successes and the challenges along the way and can help get you from point A to point B two times faster. For Kevin and I, obviously, we knew it would be a challenge, possibly an extra challenge to start a company together uh, as, as life partners as well. But we gave it a shot, and we took it, honestly, month by month. We, we didn't know what was going to happen, but we 
turn to uh, our mentors, Michael and Sochi Birch, who are uh, dear friends of ours and have created a few companies together, uh, one tech company called Bebo that they sold to AOL in 2008. And we asked them for their secret because they seem to do really well as co-founders and they still like each other. And uh, they said, oh, immediately they said, divide and conquer. Never work on the same thing at the same time, ever. And so aside from traveling together, which we get to do with these two crazy people, uh, and, and uh, doing some interviewing together, we actually don't work on the same parts of the business. We focus on entirely different parts of the business. And I think that helps when you find that co-founder who can cover, you know, you never know when you're going to be a company of great size and scale, but having that co-founder who can cover a whole part of the business while you can focus on your areas of expertise has been a true uh, lifesaver up for us, but I think also a secret to our success. Now I have to point out that we actually have a third co-founder who was crazy enough to start a company with a married couple. Uh, and he deserves uh, his own shout out, Renaud Visage, uh, who is our technical co-founder. And that was something that was incredibly vital for us to get off the ground. Both Kevin and I are not engineers, and so uh, if we could just have really great ideas and connect with customers, but we'd have no product. So we started the company with Renault, and the three of us worked um, in San Francisco, and actually Renault was in France. So we pretty much did everything wrong, by the way. Uh, we started a company together as a married couple, and we started a company with a remote co-founder. What we found is that all three of us had these different skills, and we were able to combine our skills together to cover as much as we could in the early days, which was really not much more than focusing on building the best intuitive product and delighting our customers by having a deep connection with them.